Since Russian forces invaded in late February, Ukrainian volunteers have mounted a desperate campaign to keep their nuclear materials safe. On March 2nd, civilians blockaded a road leading up to Europe's largest nuclear power plant. A nuclear bomb would be catastrophic. But destabilizing the kind of waste stored at Chernobyl and Ukraine's four other nuclear plants could create a widespread environmental disaster. So far, the war hasn't led to it, but there have been several close calls. What was in Chernobyl, it can be again. Russian forces fired on buildings holding nuclear fuel and forced plant support staff to work at gunpoint for weeks on end. Ukraine shared a video that they claim shows proof Russians dug trenches in the most contaminated areas surrounding the Chernobyl plant. Soldiers occupied it for a month before handing control back to Ukraine. Tired and stressed out personnel that are operating those kind of facilities. That's basically what brought us the Chernobyl incident in the first place. There's more than 250,000 metric tons of radioactive waste all over the world. What happens if one of these places gets hit with a stray missile? Or, like in Fukushima, a massive tidal wave? We took a closer look at sites in Ukraine to better understand one of the most dangerous types of worldwide waste. In 1986, two explosions rocked the Chernobyl nuclear power plant when workers botched a safety test of a particular turbine. The resulting meltdown released around 400 times more radioactivity than the atomic bomb in Hiroshima and took the power plant offline for good. You had kind of a, a nuclear volcano that was erupting and emitting vast quantities of this material into the atmosphere. That material poisoned 1,000 square miles, probably for thousands of years, and winds spread radioactive ash across Europe. Thousands of farmers had to abandon their crops and cancel the sale of sheep that were exposed to radiation. It created a disaster zone that needs to be carefully and constantly monitored to avoid further contamination because the reactor is still there. 31 people died in the immediate aftermath, and some studies claim as many as 4,000 will eventually die from exposure to radiation. Decades later, in the most radioactive areas, many animals are still showing the effects. And we've seen increased rates of cataract in the eyes, we've seen increased rates of tumors on the bodies of birds and rodents. And to this day, the plant employs thousands of people who risk exposure to radiation so they can monitor and do damage control 24-7. They deal with seasonal wildfires that threaten critical infrastructure and release even more radiation into the atmosphere. The Ukrainian government says its monitoring labs were damaged in the fighting, so fires could burn undetected. On March 27th, one Ukrainian official reported that more than 10,000 hectares were on fire wind could carry that radioactive smoke in any direction. Keep in mind, if Chernobyl gets hit, like the fallout will also hit Russia. So it's not in their interest to, to get that going. It's not that it's a deliberate attempt to take something out, but it's about someone making a mistake, which could have severe consequences. And that's the biggest risk here. In 2019, a European initiative called the Chernobyl Shelter Fund completed a giant stainless steel dome to cover the reactor that broke down. This new cover, which is airtight, essentially, will allow the engineers to get into the old reactor and start dismantling it piece by piece. There's enough fuel still sitting in this old bombed out shelter that it could generate a nuclear reaction. If that happens, the old reactor could burn and cause a fire, raising radiation levels around the facility. It wouldn't be quite as bad as the original accident, as the radioactive material has been stabilizing for 35 years. The actual reactor is one thing, but the biggest threat is probably the 5 million pounds of highly radioactive spent fuel rods that need to be kept cool. The small rectangular building that the old spent fuel stored in, in these giant swimming pools, that's actually probably the most concerning location on the site in terms of stray missiles. These structures are designed to withstand a plane crashing into them, but not necessarily missiles. There's no real way to get rid of the material. It's going to take centuries to millennia to disappear completely, depending on which isotope you're talking about. Ukraine generates over half of its electricity from four nuclear plants. The largest is in Zaporizhia, to the southeast. 
Crowds of civilians blockaded the road leading up to that plane in March to try to keep it safe. At first, it worked. The local mayor said that afterward Russian soldiers met with plant representatives for negotiations. But then, a couple of days later, Russian forces attacked the plant in the middle of the night. They even fired heavy weapons in the direction of buildings housing radioactive fuel. Footage from inside the plant allegedly shows workers pleading with them to stop. It's got six reactors, it's got huge amounts of radioactive waste stored in the open air outside. These sites being taken over militarily, it's an extraordinary thing to see. And it's something that the international community doesn't seem particularly well equipped to deal with. Experts say taking over the plant could be a strategic move. Controlling those kind of power plants also controls uh, power of half of the countries. That gives you uh, enormous leverage when you're controlling an area or in case of negotiations. A week after the invasion started, Russian energy officials claimed control over this second plant. There are at least 440 reactors across the world. And because they need a constant supply of cool water, many of them are located dangerously close to coastal areas. But radioactive waste is everywhere. Globally, there's more than 1,200 times the amount of radioactive waste there is at Chernobyl. While some countries have designated nuclear trash cans like Yucca Mountain in Nevada, these areas usually only store low-level radioactive waste. The abandoned community of Hanford, Washington, is home to 56 million gallons of radioactive waste from a nuclear production site that was decommissioned in 1989. Now, nuclear waste from Hanford is seeping into the water and soil in rural Washington. As far as nuclear accidents go, humanity has been extremely lucky so far. The 2011 explosion in Fukushima, Japan, could have been much, much worse. If the accident had happened at any other time of the year, probably, the radioactivity would have had a much bigger impact on terrestrial systems. It could have been going towards Tokyo. If the radioactivity had blown inland, it could have forced the evacuation of over 35 million people and rendered some areas uninhabitable for a long time. After the accident, intergovernmental groups like the International Atomic Energy Agency helped with the cleanup, and they do the same in Ukraine if needed. In 2016, two years after Russia annexed Crimea, the UN passed a resolution introduced by Ukraine on protecting the environment during armed conflicts. That means the UN and the IAEA would help manage any fallout. In fact, the IAEA is already providing technical support to Ukraine and offered to broker an agreement to maintain nuclear safety during the conflict. But it doesn't look like the Russians will agree. We asked the Russian government for comment, but they did not respond. For now, war drags on. Around a quarter of Ukrainians have fled for their lives. If they return, the question is, what kind of landscape will they come back to?